Hi guys, welcome to the fifth and final lesson of this drawing portrait series. By now, your portraits should be looking nearly finished, just a little bit flat. To make our portraits look more realistic and have a strong sense of depth and form, we really want to darken the shadows and lighten up the highlights. This doesn't mean that we have to darken all the shadows and lighten all the highlights, but you really want to use your reference and see where the darkest shadows sit within the shadows and where the lightest highlights sit within the light areas. To achieve really dark tones, I'm using a 6B black pencil, which allows me to not only create more form and depth, but also helps me add clarity to my line work. As I said in the previous class, you don't want to go in trying to get as dark of a shade as possible. You really want to slowly build up your layers until you gradually get a dark tone. Remember to also make sure you're shading using lines that are all parallel to each other. This way, you will have less uneven surfaces and it will make your drawing look more realistic. Now I'll let you watch me do this process, explain how I shade the hair when we get to that bit in the video.
found when I first started drawing portraits that the hardest part for me to do well was the hair. I used to always try and draw each single strand of hair separately. Made the hair on my portraits look a little bit like wigs. So instead of trying to draw each strand of hair, I like to look at the forms of the shadows and lights, just like we did for the face. In this reference, the hair as a whole is a very dark shape. Therefore, in the previous lesson, I shaded it all in using a 2B pencil. This creates a good mid-tone layer for me to work on now, using my 6B pencil to layer in the darker sections of the shadows. Drawing the hair is a very time-consuming part of the portrait, so make sure you're patient and don't give up. After you've drawn in all the darkest areas of the hair, now you can move on to adding the highlights. It's really important that you do it in this order so that your highlights stay as white as possible and they don't get smudged in the process. However, you can also use a kneadable eraser and just sculpt it into a little point so you can erase smaller sections. Now that I've explained the concept, I'll let you watch how I darken my shadows and add in the highlights at the very end.
We have come to the end of this drawing portrait series. I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. Thank you for sticking to the end. We'd love to see the portraits that you guys created from watching these series. So send me your works to my Instagram, at Kimberly's Illustrations, and I would love to see what you guys created. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.